but for the Titans, and I'm sure he's ready in his senior year to get things started. Opening tip, one back to Green Bay here. It's Cade Meyer who flips it back. McGee, Kellogg, Meyer, Ansong, and Jenkins. This is kind of a post-heavy lineup for Will Ryan's team. They had some success at their place in the paint. This one will fall loose. Isiani diving and able to pick up that basketball. Right away, you see the hustle and the grit by Isiani getting on the floor and doing a good job because part of Green Bay's game is Myers inside. They did a good job that time controlling him around the basket because he can be a handful. And for Detroit Mercy, the sixth straight time that they've used this lineup, trying to find some consistency in that. Isiani able to draw the foul. That one against Nate Jenkins. A uh, good cut to the basket that time. Isiani wasted no time of trying to get in there and was able to get the foul. And they have to they have to look to attack this team. Right here you can see him getting inside the lane, making the contact with his body and was able to draw that foul. Really hasn't gotten to the free throw line much this year, just his 17th attempt. Well, his statistics doesn't speak for how valuable he is to this Titans team. We just saw how he got down on the floor to get that loose ball to get things started. And on this end, he comes down to get the first two points of the game. And you see the Titans wasting no time. There was some full court pressure at the beginning of this game. Kamari McGee, also a member of that all freshman team, along with his teammate Cade Meyer. Both members of the starting lineup here tonight, showing that the future might be just bright for Green Bay coming up. Extremely bright. A lot of good young players. Here's Meyer against Waterman. Four to shoot. Meyer travel. No, he call an offensive foul either way. Well, you can see that he dipped that shoulder that time. And he lay it with his shoulder, and you know when you do that, they're gonna blow the whistles on you. On you. A good job by the Titans. They'll stay in his zone defense all night long. He'll see double teams coming at him inside. Two nothing. Detroit Mercy with the early lead here. T.J. Harvey. Played sparingly versus Purdue Fort Wayne. Just the pacing, wanted other personnel in there. Matt Johnson off for Davis. Catch and shoot, he rips it. Oh, that's always a good sign. You know, when you can see Antoine Davis gets off shooting a three-point ball like that, you know, it's a good sign that he's, he's hit it for a good night. 26 points in just 33 minutes. They've been trying to limit his minutes a bit more towards tournament time, trying to keep those legs fresh. I think they'd love to do that here today if they get up big at one point. Kellogg against Harvey. Shot clock down to nine. And that one is another turnover. Well, the Titans are definitely making a statement defensively here early in this ball game. And you see that zone defense and a little trap at the top. And they made a mistake and let them break the trap that time. But the back line held up for the Titans. And an offensive foul on Detroit Mercy now, their first of the game. It's on Isiani. So Green Bay gets it right back. Woolley's a guy that set a lot of screams during the course of the year, too, and he's got really good at it. You know, that time he was caught moving on the screen. But usually does a pretty good job of getting people open. Kellogg. Against Matt Johnson. Back off for Jenkins now. Runs into Waterman. Finds McGee. Harvey puts a body into him now. And Song, tight area, got it stripped. Johnson comes up with it for Detroit Mercy here. Davis backs up from the free throw line. He has five. Showing the ability to be able to knock down that mid range, which is huge. I mean, his three point shot, we know that's solid, but. And when he's get that mid-range game going, it's going to be tough to tough to guard him. Seven nothing Detroit Mercy. They're two for two from the field and one for one from three. Kellogg off for Jenkins. Now it's Meyer from the corner, spinning against Isiani. Got nothing but glass, and Harvey pulls it down. Well, Willie's doing a good job of moving his feet and staying in front of him, getting hands up against him. Antoine ball in a string there. That one just hung off the top. Flustered he couldn't see it go through. McGee loves to run in transition, but another offensive foul. Well, good awareness that time by Antoine. He sprinted back and was able to get in front of him. McGee with the push off going to the basket. 
So that's the first on McGee. McGee, Meyer, and Jenkins all have one. McAdoo into the ball game here for Detroit Mercy. It's McAdoo, Harvey, Johnson, Isiani, and Waterman. And this is something you didn't see Coach Davis do early in this season. Early substitution, getting Antoine Davis out of the game, getting other people in. With that media timeout coming up, it gives them some extra rest as well. That one just sputtering off the inside for Harvey. It's a Green Bay team that will use a lot of the shot clock in most possessions. They're one of the slowest teams in Division I as Detroit Mercy trying to hound them defensively. What a steal by McAdoo. And, you know, going into Green Bay, I don't know what the mindset was with the team at that particular time, but it didn't play a very good basketball game down there, and Green Bay was, was ready, ready for them. Here's Harvey. Backing down Ansong. He wants Isiani, still plenty of time to shoot, 10 seconds. Davis still on the on the bench here, I should say, as Isiani had that blocked up top by Meyer. Here comes Ansong quickly to the front court. And another offensive foul, that's their third. The Titans doing a good job getting back in position defensively. We saw Woolley that time underneath the basket. It's very rare. You know, usually he'll give you a nice little pump fake underneath the basket, but got his shot blocked that time. Um, and it looks like he's got a, looking at him grimace and a little bit going out the game, holding his knee. Hopefully Woolley will be okay. Been banged up at times this year, had a concussion earlier, then had the back problems. He didn't miss any games there, just kind of knocked in the back. Games a couple games ago as Davis knocks down a huge three. And Detroit Mercy continues to rally up 10 0. McGee trying to get this offense going. Gotten up just two shots today with all those fouls. McGee splitting McAdoo and Waterman. And it's Waterman who commits the foul. Well, McGee with his quickness and speed, he's able to get inside the lane and make things happen. We talked about him at the top of the game, and he's a guy that really can get this team going. If they're going to get their offense, this is the guy that they'll get it from. So you have LeGreer and Coca in right now for Detroit Mercy. Steber also in for Green Bay out of the timeout as McGee knocks down his first free throw. I really like this young man just from watching some film, and obviously the league coaches like him too, voting him to the all-freshman team. Averaging 11 a game, 38% from the floor. They think he shoots better than that in the long run, but a freshman learning on the fly in a tough league, certainly, as Ryan Claflin now checks in for the big fella Meyer. Well, this team's record is no indication on what kind of team they are. They played a lot of close ball games this year, and they've been in each and every one of them, just haven't been able to close the games out, so they're very capable. Davis runs to the far sideline here, now looking to run the other direction. McAdoo dribbles to the free throw line, double clutch, got it to go. McAdoo is a lot of experience. Uh, grad student coming in here for his last year, and uh, you know, he's definitely got something to bring to the table. And they, more and more, he's been showing that he can really help this team at, at the right time of the year. Coca against Kirchemann, and Kirchemann gets the better. Kirchemann. Coco allowed him to bag him down two or three dribbles and taking steps back. You have to hold your ground against the bigs. Davis off for Waterman. His first shot is off the inside. Stumbled after the fact as Kamari McGee runs into the front court here. Quick catch and shoot. Tucker won't fall, and McAdoo pulls it home. Detroit Mercy trying to continue this hot start. Davis has been a big reason why. And Davis has wasted no time inserting himself into this ball game. He has 10 off four of five shooting. McGee back off for Steber again, puts it on the floor, sets up Kirchamon. Offensive rebound that time by Tucker. Coach says he's really gotten better rebounding the basketball this year. McGee rebound Kirchamon again. 
Titans got to do a better job of blocking out. Allowing this team to have three shots at the basket. McGee dashes his way home. Coca's down on the right baseline, helped up there. It's Coca, Davis, Legreer, Waterman, along with McAdoo out there right now for Mike Davis's team. Legreer inside to Coca, easy deuce. And that's where you want to find him at seven feet tall. If you can get him underneath the basket right there, it's pretty easy for him to put that ball in. Steber high bouncer there as Kirchemann was barreling his way through and Jem is heading to the line to shoot a pair. It's going to go against Antoine Davis, his first team third. The Phoenix already with five fouls as we hit the 12 minute marker. So here in the first half. Well, they weren't fully sure whether Jem Kirchemann would go here today. Did not play the last couple games. He was hitting the lip. They had to stitch that up and missed a few. That was in practice. But he is good to go here today. More skilled, bigger body. Well, the Titans are really utilizing their bench here early in this ball game. You see Mohammed enter, enters the game. This gave them a few quality minutes here of late. Already the fourth guy they've used off the bench is Sila. McAdoo runs out of space as he drops it for Davis. Titans six of ten from the field looking for Sila, picked off by Kirchman. He's been right place, right time more often than not. It's a tough pass to get in there. He's got to be right on the money with that and hope that that big guy can catch that bounce pass. Catch and shoot for Tucker. He buries it. That's a guy they brought in to do just that. Has only shot 20% this year, but they think there's a lot of upside with the threes for him. Sela holds it high against a much smaller McGee, and he holds his ground and takes the charge. Well, Coach Davis is not happy about that. He wanted him to move the basketball in that situation right there. You see him down in the low post, bagging down and taking some dribbles down, and I'm not sure Coach Davis expected for him to to do that. 16 to 11 lead for Detroit Mercy. Well, this is a big body coming into a 6'4 body here. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, you see him getting low, holding his position here, and the dribbles, and instead of taking that ball and making a quick move with it, and he got good position. And it was so slow the way he committed that the move there that he had time to to set itself and, and take the charge. There's no way he was going to block it, so put himself in a great position to, to take the charge. Well, this coaching staff thinks there's some upside to Mo Sila. He really hasn't gotten in a groove because he's missed a lot of time, a lot of time early practice-wise because of injury. That was kind of in and out of the COVID protocols for a while, but he's seen some significant minutes down the stretch as he stays in out of this timeout as well. Well, obviously, they like his size. They like the way he runs the court. He just doesn't have any in-game experience right now, and uh, that's a problem this time of the year. Steber back in there. Kirchman back outside. McGee tees up a huge three. It's Green Bay rolling right back into this ball game. It's a two-point ball game right now, and uh, pretty much expected. Davis has ten already, with some rest as well. So pretty impressive, all things considered. The lob. For Sela, put it back down and puts it off the glass and in. Mike Davis has gone four deep on this bench so far today, including the two big guys. I really don't know what Willie's situation is, so because he hasn't reported back in the ball game since he, he left out. So I don't know what the injury is, but hopefully uh, he'll be back. He's over there with a shooter sleeve on right now on the end of the bench. McGee back off for Matt Johnson. The screen from Sela trying to thread the needle that time for Harvey and punched. You, you, you can't can't make that pass. That that pad, bounce pass inside the key is not a good pass right there. When you got guys 6'10", 6 6'11", 6 and you're trying to throw the ball at their feet, it's hard for them to get down and get it. And I'm sure you know Coach Davis is going to point that out to his guards. You know that's got you got to throw that pass up high to big guys around the basket.
Kurchamon, McGee, and Song, Steber, and Randy Tucker on the floor right now for Will Ryan's team. Steber, a heck of a passer. Gets it down low for Ansong off the feed from Tucker that time. McGee. Ansong explodes. Uh, that's, that's when he's at his best right there. He's got great athleticism. Uh, he caught the ball inside the lane that time and was able to explode and throw it down. Averaging 11 a game. Certainly has been taking on a bigger role this year. His head coach talked about how he's more of a focal point on the scouting report this time around. Some of the guys transferring. Davis shuttering one through. This is one of the hotter starts we've seen from Zero this year. I'm sure he's going to do everything he can to try to help this team get to where they need to get to. Kirchman seeing some big time minutes as well as he runs the avenue and draws another Detroit Mercy foul. That's on Sela, his second, team fifth. Is the only Detroit Mercy player with more than one foul. Number 12, Kirchman shooting two. Nobody on Green Bay side has more than one to this point. Kurt. <laughs> Go ahead. I know first, I mean, first halves in these games are always in interesting. I know we spoke earlier about that. And you were saying how many games this team has been up uh, in the first half of a basketball game. And, you know, it's always interesting to watch to see what goes on in the first half. And teams usually play a different style of basketball the second half of basketball games. And you talk about that. It's been 12 times, including against some big time teams, Northern Kentucky, one of them. Oh, it's nobody they haven't played tight. You know, this team will they'll hang around and they'll be right there in the ball game. You have to bring your A game for 40 minutes against them. Davis was cutting one way and the pass came to the near sideline. Another turnover here for Detroit Mercy. A little miscommunication on that yeah, between Davis and Antoine Davis and Johnson. So that's five turnovers aside. Green Bay has done a better job of limiting them down the stretch of this first half. And the pace of the game is kind of slowed down, too. That's what Green Bay wants, though. That's exactly what they've tried to do all season long. McGee hangs it up in the air. Manny Ansong, wild one. Scooping that in midair is Harvey. Trey Mercy trying to push and extend this lead once again. Davis rising up. Bingo! Well, he's been the man here for them in the first half, and they definitely got to get some other people involved offensively to help him out. 16 points for Antoine Davis already. McGee back off for Ansong, cut off on that right baseline. Another step in front steal from Harvey. Trying to go coast to coast, bullying his way off the center of the glass and in. Like a, maybe too many steps on that one, huh? but he was, he was able to keep his foot in and barely he shot that off his wrist and was able to get it going in the basket. McGee had it blocked. Harvey doing it all. Davis looks locked in, doesn't he? 16, make it. Ah, stays at 16, a bit too strong. Getting right off the lip of the rim. Stever, bomb pass, and Song all the way won't fall. That's a big miss for Green Bay, who's down eight all of a sudden. Well, they're right here in the ball game, and they'll look to strike back. Titans got to take advantage of some of these stops that they're getting in the defensive end of the floor. Waterman cut off there. Not a lot of space against Meyer. Davis off for Harvey, had it blocks in this first half. It's got a lot to do with Antoine Davis, and uh, you know, it's, good, it's both good and bad. You know, it's always a lot better when the wealth is shared, uh, you know, throughout the game when other guys are shooting and scoring the basketball and not just one guy. For the first time in six games, Manda a catch is seeing action here for Detroit Mercy as turnover number 10 will well, give it right back. Coach Davis is going to check to see where he's at because he's been out for a long time. I don't know exactly. I know it's been over two weeks and not being able to run with an ankle injury. That means no conditioning, no game time. And I think he just wants to see if he's has anything to bring to the table here. 
He ran for the first time two days ago, and he practiced fully for the first time yesterday. Not a lot of contact happening, though, with this short week McAdoo. as McAdoo scoops and scores. This game has so much to do with timing, and uh, when you take that much time off, you definitely will be out of sync with everything. So it's LeGreer, a catch, Waterman, McAdoo, and Johnson right now for Detroit Mercy. And Song off to Tucker, deep three off the back of the iron, and skying up is Johnson. First rebound here today as a pair of assists. All the way McAdoo. is McAdoo once again. McAdoo known for his outside shooting touch, but doing a good job here in the first half of attacking the basket and getting there once again right up the middle to lay that one in. Six points in seven minutes. Also has a rebound and assist to his credit. Tucker. Off to Meyer and a three ball by Steber is pulled down by Johnson. At times Matt Johnson has had to become one of those rebounders down the stretch run for Detroit Mercy. One reason why I catch being out those six games and Isiani here or there. Mass instruction from the Detroit Mercy bench on what he wants this offense to do. McAdoo fading away won't fall. I catch offensive rebound. And Waterman still hasn't made a field goal. And they definitely need his scoring. Ansong cutting his way through, double clutch off the glass and in. I'll tell you, a lot of athleticism out of Ansong. Went to the basket that time, double clutch, and by floating through the air, <laughs> laid itself off the glass. The Division II transfer last year. After everyone got that blanket waiver, was eligible about six games in for Green Bay. LeGreer looking to attack. Six to shoot. Johnson fades one up and off. And Waterman hit the baseline hard there, fouled by Meyer. And Matt Johnson in with a little soft shot right around the basket. And Noah is chipping in, getting to the boards. Uh, still a little bit of concern about Willie Isiani. I mean, he hasn't haven't seen anything out of him since they took him out the game. I guess we'll have some type of update on him at the half. Still sitting on the end of the bench right now. As Waterman sinks it through, 31 to 20. Johnson and I catch out. Harvey and Davis back in. How about this half for Antoine Davis? He's played just 12 minutes, which isn't that little, but for Antoine, it's a few more less than we're used to. But anyway, 16 points, six of eight, four, four from three. Well, I mean, it's good that he's able to, you know, to trust other people out on the floor, and that's a good thing uh, for them to be able to have him to get rest. And he's been efficient since he's been out there, so that'll give a lot in his tank the second half of this basketball game. Japana Kellogg, also back in this game, has the basketball along with Nate Jenkins. McGee off for Claflin, three ball, nothing, but all the way back out to McGee, and Mike Davis is wondering why. Hmm. Kellogg had it taken away, but a foul. It's the sixth against the Titans, and the first, or the second, check that on Waterman. Well, the Titans are having the opportunity, but, you know, this team is always going to hang around. You know, we talked about how they're always in ball games, and Titans got to take advantage of these opportunities if they're going to try to pull away from this team. McGee from the free throw line, back out for Ansong. Hits Claflin. Jenkins on the floor and draws a foul on McAdoo. It will be the second on McAdoo as well. McAdoo having a solid first half here. You, you know, you want to keep him out of foul trouble. You need him going down the stretch. Number one, Lishnow for Green Bay. Mitch Listow in for the first time. Injured for a majority of the middle part of this season. High ankle sprain. But back for the stretch run, playing about 10 minutes a game. One and one for Jenkins as he nails the first. A catch. Back in for Waterman. And I tell you, the bench is active for the Titans here, here tonight. Jenkins, 80% at the line this year. Makes it a little better there. 
And the lead down to 10 for Detroit Mercy. 12 is the high as it's been. McAdoo, Davis, Harvey, Legreer, and I catch. Davis again. Boy, is he locked in. Yeah, he's focusing. Those are the shots, and we, we know what kind of nights he's capable of having, and he's off to a start to, to give us a night to remember here in Callahan Hall. 19 first half points, still four minutes to go. McGee runs the lane. Nice looking shot there. And McGee answers the bill for Green Bay. They like his ability in the paint. Davis shutters that one off the front. Titans got it back, though. Decent job at offensive rebounding here today. You know, you, you look at Madut Aket. He was their leading rebounder before his injury came about. He was the second leading scorer and the leading rebounder on this team. Titans have been able to adjust with his absence. Harvey catch and shoot off the inside. He's one for four to start tonight's game. McGee against a catch. Beat him to the hoop, but Harvey ended it. His fourth rebound tonight. Davis, quick pass to McAdoo. Ooh, just spun off the right side. Lifts out quickly. Off for Jenkins now. List out, bought some space. McGee going to jack a deep three, and he hit it from the middle. McGee for three. Just like that, it's an eight-point game once again. It's the one thing about this team. They're going to always hang in the ball game. They'll always be right there. Screen by LeGreer. Davis from the corner off to Harvey. Soft touch. A good pass that time by Antoine Davis, the penetration drawing the players to him and was able to drop that off to DJ Harvey for an easy lay-in. Detroit Mercy shooting 54% from the floor, 56% from three, five and nine. Direct opposite what they were able to do against Purdue Fort Wayne. They shot 75% against the Titans in the first half. Well, that was a offense performance they put on here, a clinic in the first half of the basketball game. Kind of just shake your head. Davis rising up. Green Bay shaking their head. Could very well be Davis's last performance in Callahan Hall. I, he's, he's on the pace to make it a memorable one. Spark down the middle. I catch. Back to McAdoo now. Harvey catch and shoot. Pings off the heel. McGee skies up for the board. His fourth tonight. The lead 13 for Detroit Mercy. 22 points for Davis. A good defensive job that time by Harvey. He cut the driving lanes off, moving his feet. Kellogg one way, then the other. Nice hook that he likes to do. Draws it back to 11, and Detroit Mercy will ice some time here. This Green Bay team has started to shoot a bit earlier in the shot clock. Down the stretch. McAdoo got it to go. And this is what they've been hoping. You know, this, this is this one two punch of McAdoo and Davis here in the first half of the game. And McAdoo is a big time scorer, and they definitely need his offense. Jenkins all the way home got it to swirl in 43 31 to Green Bay. Answering all the Detroit Mercy baskets, just can't seem to get a stop here in the first half of action. Davis, Harvey, Legreer, McAdoo, I catch the group out here to end this second half. Or second part of the first half, I should say. Davis through his legs. Deep tray this time. Nothing but air. Haven't seen much of that. Continued movement towards Indianapolis. Couple of days of first rounds and then quarterfinal games, and they'll be there. 1.5 seconds left in that heat. Places as well, so you know, the Titans got to come out and have a good second half of basketball here. They came out aggressive, and they need to be the aggressors here in the second half of this game. Antoine Davis had 22 in that first half. Starts with the basketball here. Waterman, Coca, Harvey, and Johnson. 
out there to begin things as well. Coca spinning for two. Coca. Definitely going to need his his help here in the uh, second half of this ball game. No Willie Isiani. I haven't heard a report on uh, what his situation is, but we didn't see him after he left the game early in the first half. And appear to be grabbing his knee. And song for Cade Meyer. Right into the chest of Coke and Waterman that time, and Coca snatches it. And so you cave used that shoulder a whole lot underneath the basket. That could have very well been an offensive foul the way he ducked in. Davis bounces <laughs> off the contact for two. And to me, that's an important shot for Davis. That mid-range shot right there. I mean, anytime you're a great three-point shooter, that mid-range can be, you know, you look in the NBA at the Rosen and uh he's mastered that shot, and you see what type of ball game he's having this year. Jenkins with a catch and shoot falls short. Matt Johnson able to pull it down. Davis again. Boy, he's some kind of fire right now. Yeah, he's working the mid-range game right now. McGee's definitely got his hands full. I'm sure, you know, eventually you're going to see some type of double teams of people running at Davis. Six of seven from three as well in that first half. Johnson committing his first. Yeah, you talk about sacrificing your body, you know, Matt Johnson diving head first that time to go after a loose ball. You know, coaches, they love that type of dedication. That's, you know, that's a dangerous play to take, but he, he dove head first to go after a loose ball. And maybe it's just because it's down the stretch and Detroit Mercy needing to win, obviously, every game they can at this point, but we've seen that a bit more, it seems, the diving and going well, for balls. Now it's win or go home. You got to do everything you can. Buries that one through, counting in a foul. Good move underneath the basket by Myers that time. Myers is good around the basket. And Harvey had the position, took a shot in the face, got the foul, and got scored on. So that's, that's not a good feeling right there. He came down right across Harvey's face. You can see there on the replay. Matt Johnson is heading to the Detroit Mercy bench right now. As he was kind of holding his knee. Maybe there's some blood there. Trying to address that quickly with a bandage or two. He went down pretty hard there. He might have scraped his knee against on the floor. So play continues, and Johnson is good to go. That's the second lightning taping we've seen in the last couple of games for Detroit Mercy. You have to cover the blood up. Into Davis, attacks like that for the first time today. He might have 30 before the first media timeout here. 28 for Antoine, 10 of 14. Jenkins on the elbow now. Off for Kellogg. They're staying with his bigger lineup to start this second half. Disrupted, Harvey and Coca, each with those swatting hands. Davis, one way then the other. Boy, he's locked in. I tell you, I love the mid-range action right now. It's an opportunity to do that, and I don't know with Green Bay, they're just not sending a, the right amount of players at Davis. Usually we see two or three people in all kind of different defenses designed to stop him. Pretty much been letting him have his way here. <laughs> and what was it for the NCAA officiating mentor mentee met a networking event for Tuesday's men's basketball championship? Learn more about all these great events, visit horizonleague.com slash indie. Green Bay with the basketball here. It's been a dominant start for Detroit Mercy. McGee spinning, ending what was a big scoring drop. It's the best basket they desperately needed right now, but that's, that's their guy right there. If anybody's going to answer the bell for him, he'll be the guy to do it. McGee. Madonna catches back in the game here for Detroit Mercy. Randy Tucker for Green Bay. Johnson against Tucker here. Off the front, and Tucker will pull down the board. 12 to 2, Detroit Mercy so far here in the second half. DJ Harvey has been a force defensively. He's going to commit a foul there. Yeah, a little bit too much contact reaching around trying to go after that basketball. Officials are right on top of it. 
McAdoo is in for Antoine Davis. Davis had a decent amount of rest in that first half, but still piled in the points, that's for sure. Great start to the second half as well. 32 already. Detroit's definitely got to get some other people going offensively here. McGee, no look pass. Have to correct a, a lot of a lot of things to make it more clarity to, to what's happening. Steber chucks it on in for Kamari McGee. He's out there with Meyer, Tucker, and Anson. Three to shoot, faded one up in time, but right there is a catch to steal it away. That I catch with about 10 minutes played tonight. Three rebounds, not a shot taken. He's trying to get his feel for the game of basketball again. Hasn't practiced hardly at all. Just one day yesterday. Waterman catch and shoot, looking for his first field goal. Won't be there. And McGee is bumped by a catch. Well, you can see that one coming off of Waterman's hand that wasn't on target. And be interesting to see if the Titans can get some offense going without Davis being on the floor right now. They definitely need to get some other people involved offensively and Noah's been a guy that's been able to knock down open shots and Matt Johnson McAdoo did a pretty good job of uh, working with Davis in the first half but they got to find some other people offensively to keep things going. Kurt Chaman, the turkey native is back in he played some solid minutes in that first half six points four or four from the free throw line as well. McGee at the elbow there against Johnson may have pushed off a bit. <laughs> It looks like an offensive foul to me. Kurt Shimon able to continue his hot start. He's doing a good job of using his body and keeping that arm close to him, though not extending it. And usually officials will let you let you have that. So eight for Kurt Shimon in just six minutes off the bench. On their backup bigs. Johnson Harvey a catch. McAdoo Waterman on the floor right now for Mike Davis's team. Antoine Davis continues to remain on the bench. Trying to get some other guys involved here. Five to shoot, tucking past Waterman. Waterman. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good to have a guy that, you know, when he's scoring like that, but you, you know, you, you're a little bit more comfortable when you got it coming from a lot of different areas. Tucker back to Steber. Ears went out for Anson. Rainbow three, it's good. And that one almost hit the Anson. ceiling here at Callahan Hall. Brought rain down the way he shot that one straight through. Harvey's done some good things defensively. Six rebounds and a few disruptions. Harvey. Rips the net there. Yeah, maybe this time with Antoine on the bench, we'll get some other people going. Harvey with six and six now. Telegraphing pass for Tucker. Got it. Green Bay is showing some signs of connecting from the three-point line. That's Tucker's second today, something they've been waiting on all season long, hitting a couple big ones. Harvey to the free throw line, moves one way, then the other, fades it through. A little reverse pivot on that shot, going the wrong way, off the wrong leg, knocked it down. Steber now to Anson. Kirchemann, late tucking pass there. Tucker got it back, sinks it. Well, good ball movement that time by Green Bay. Something they did pretty well against Detroit Mercy the first time around. They shot very hot from three in the first half at Green Bay, six of them made, something they haven't done well this year. Tucker with a hand check against Harvey. It's Koken Davis coming back in for Detroit Mercy now. Uh, Davis was able to get a, a good little rest there, and he's entering back into the ball game. McAdoo back to Davis. Five to shoot. Antoine fading away. That one falls shy. Boy, most of his fadeaway shots have fallen here tonight. Kirchman all the way back out to Tucker. Boing's off the heel. 
as Harvey got a piece of that and it remains out of bounds off him. You see Harvey missed time in his jump that time and went up and wasn't able to bring that one in. Green Bay takes advantage of this dead ball another substitution. It's Claflin who checks in. He's played sparingly so far here today. Kyle LeGreer is also back in for Waterman. LeGreer falls down. McGee hobbled, now holding his left knee. Looks like him and uh, LeGreer might have bumped knees, but he seems to be fine. McGee off for Steber. Kirchham on down low, moving one way, then the other. Claflin, fadeaway three, got it. Don't look now, Green Bay starting to swim their way back. 61-47. Antoine Davis, 32 points on the basketball here. Wild pass outside, tip once. LeGreer comes up with it though. Still 10 to shoot. McAdoo dumps for Harvey in a crowd. Steber, hoping that was going. Green Bay has leveled the scoring a bit in the second half after a 12 to four start. It's now 18 to 16, Detroit Mercy. And the shot clock runs out, preventing Ansong and company from running to the front court. One coach is mad about one thing, the other mad about another. <laughs> and they had a tough, tough time getting the ball in bounds. You can see Twan mishandling the ball here and coming from behind. A little bump there, able to get a hand on the ball, and 24 second clock runs. I mean, the clock runs out. Not, not 24 second clock, but the clock. <laughs> <laughs> McGee fires over the hands of Coca. Boy, it takes a lot to get over those long arms. And everybody's upset again, both sides. Yeah, well, a lot of good hustle. Good hustle by Green Bay that time. Yeah, it looks as if the, they did go over and back on that play. McGee fought through the crowd of Titans there and laid it up and in. Well, this is getting way too close if you're a Detroit Mercy fan here. 61-49, especially the way you started this second half at a 22-point lead. Something that always happens. <laughs> Gee, a tough shot by Coca that time, rebounding and kind of reverse layup. And that's, you know, you want to see him dunk the ball around the basket. Rambling. You can see him. Mm. Looks as if, yep, almost. It's a close call. They look like it went into the backcourt. They were able to get it. And I don't think uh, either coach paid any attention to that. They were arguing about <laughs> something else. So. So Coca is out. Waterman is back in. It's Davis, Johnson, Waterman, LeGreer, and Harvey. As we hit around the middle point of this second half. Davis has yet to score since coming back in. Johnson barrels his way through. That's the problem. The Titans are struggling to score from any other areas. If Davis is not scoring the basketball, they're not getting offense from any other areas right now. And Song wildly chucks that one up. Claflin able to keep it in. Now Steber directing traffic. Leans one Kirchham on. One more pass for Claflin. Still eight to shoot. Claflin lays it up and in. The lead down to 10. Team that's, that has been fighting all season long, and they're definitely not going to go away easily. And uh, you know, Detroit's got to make some moves to find some offense here. I've been talking about it all game long. I mean, you, you you know, you got one guy scoring. That's that's the problem. Legreer will take up the basketball here, coming off an 18-minute performance against Purdue Fort Wayne. Stats don't tell the full story for how number two plays, though. He didn't score any points and had just one assist and a turnover, but played some gutty minutes. 
Four to shoot. Davis a deep tray off the back of the iron. Waterman trying to scoop that up midair, but McGee comes up with it. McGee to the free throw line all the way home. No, second try won't fall either as Davis is going to have to dive and not come up with it. Ansong through the traffic up and through. I'll tell you what, Green Bay is definitely back in this ball game. The Titans have a lot of time left on this clock, and the Titans got their hands full right now with this Green Bay team. You can see the confidence is bubbling on the Green Bay. The momentum has definitely changed. 61-53, Detroit Murray. Some important minutes on the stretch here. If they can just get some rebounding out of him and get something out of him, and uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of strange. He was out for such a long period of time. And they're giving Mike Davis a warning, saying no more. And he has to be careful here. We don't want to get a technical foul right here. He was close, the official to coming together and <laughs> putting that T on, I think. Three seconds to shoot. Legreer tucks it out. McAdoo, rainbow gun won't fall. And again, McGee with the rebound. He averages three a game. He's gone past that here tonight. Steber lob for Ansong. He showcases athleticism tonight. LeGreer ties him up in the arrow favors Green Bay. Well, right now the total momentum is definitely in Green Bay's favor. Not only the arrow, but the momentum. <laughs> this ball game has took a swing. This is a 20 to six run in favor of the Phoenix right now. Thanks to our stat man, Jeremiah Hergott. Steber to chuck it in, 13 to shoot. He might look for Claflin in the post here. Instead, it's McGee against Davis. Ansong, catch and shoot off the left side. And here, a catch pulls down a huge board. Davis running to the front court, laser line drive three. He's been a bit colder here in the second half, and we have a foul down there. He's putting it down, and he's back in the game. Glasses off. The Greer. Now for Waterman. Stunning run by Green Bay here. It's 20 to 8. McAdoo. Wow, that's a huge one. What a much needed basket, you know, by the Titans. And they gotta they gotta tighten it up here on the defensive end of the floor. 64-53 now. Tucker to the corner to McGee now, kind of wildly flipping it to the far sideline. Last off of Davis's hands. It's kind of a silent whistle on that. I don't know if the officials know exactly what to make of that. Uh, you see the drive. You see the good position that he has here. Runs right into him, knocks him down. No offensive foul call, and you know, like the ball's going back to uh, to Green Bay. 16 to shoot. We've had a lot of these throw-ins. About half the shot clock down in the last five, six minutes. A catch and Waterman double, and it causes McAdoo to steal. Quickly to Antoine Davis. He's going to drive all the way home and score. Yes. Yes. Titans need to really tighten things up here. Uh, this Green Bay team is going to fight to the very end. Though. I like this young Green Bay team doing this all year long. And, you know, there's still a lot of time left in this ball game. You'll see them make another run at this. Detroit Mercy will settle it down, use some of the clock, look to get another high percentage look. Davis has 34. It's cooled off a bit here in the second half. LeGreer pumps it back to a catch. Madet with four to shoot. Waterman looking for his first book it. Uh, and that's what we've been missing a lot this ball game because we we're accustomed to seeing him knock down at least two or three of those three pointers a game. It's coming in a timely fashion. Five for Noah Waterman. As 
That one spun back off for Kirchamon. McGee misses again as Davis will pull it down. And now Detroit Mercy trying to pull Foley away. Antoine all the way home. Can't score that one. Waterman with a tip. And Ansong picks it back up. I think there's no reason to be in a hurry with the Titans right now. I mean, you want to burn clock. You're getting into the five minute period right now, making sure you're getting quality shots. How about Kamari McGee in his first Horizon League playoff game as 18 tonight? Well over his average. Uh, well, he's the guy that uh, has been the most consistent you know, for this team. Right here, you see McAdoo making this move to the basket. Good behind the back pull up. Mike Davis again given the official near full. <laughs> I think they've had enough though. Well, you know, the thing with him is, is you know, we look at it, and I, I mentioned it last game. And he's always having a lot of conversations with the officials. So the officials are not going to tee you up unless you're saying something pretty bad. So whatever his conversation is, it's not enough for him to draw the tech. And I guess he's, you know, with, with the experience that he's got, he's he's been doing it for quite a while. Legreer offered Harvey, spun it short. Tucker boards. And Tucker comes up hobbling a little bit. Has it now on the free throw line. Good passing back to Randy. Too strong. Legreer nearly lost it, but does gain it back. It's a big possession here, trying to pull away with under five to play. Davis confidently. Another foul on Green Bay. Well, you want to you want to take your time here not not take quick shots. Try to run as many seconds off the clock as you can. And you see Davis making this move. Once he turned that corner, it's difficult to do anything. Picking the fouls up. Steber out, Listow in. It's Listow, Claflin, Jenkins, McGee. Kirchamon. Matt Davis has been really Matt Davis had a, a big game against Fort Wayne uh, on senior night here and uh, he's been pretty quiet here as well tonight at 21 against Purdue Fort Wayne season high Harvey draws another already the sixth team foul kind of out of nowhere here on Green Bay you see Harvey got his mind made up making a strong move to get to the basket. It's a little body contact right there. He's able to draw the foul. So this game is kind of slowed down to a snail's pace all of a sudden. And that Green Bay rally that's been cut off a bit by Detroit Mercy as Harvey makes his first free throw there. Free throws have not been a huge part of this game for the Titans, just five of them. And this Titans, you know, it's just the flow of the offense and everything. You know, you, and we and talk about Wooly and, you know, like we always talk about a lot of not a things show up in the stat sheet, but his ability to set screens, his ability to pass the basketball and, you know, all that's been missing throughout this ball game, right? He's a guy, he's like a glue guy for this Titans team and things run a whole lot smoother when he's out on the court. Listow off to McGee, the running lane will go. That's 20 for McGee now. Behind the back pass, Harvey trying to hang on, he cannot. And again, Green Bay with a chance to cut it to 11 with a three here. See Harvey going after that ball, he was already headed toward the floor, so. Uh... Dribble it out of bounds, and the Titans have to lock it up. They need a defensive stop here on this end of the court. McGee off down the middle now for Cade Meyer. Nate Jenkins. Plenty of shot clock to go here. And a travel. Used to fighting, and, and they are, you know. Somewhat of a losing streak. They was able to snap the losing streak they were on. Uh, played against a team with five players, IUPUI, and uh, 
was able to snap that streak, but they fight every night. It's, you know, it's not their record doesn't indicate uh, what kind of team they are. Davis spinning. Drew another foul. Seventh of the half now for Green Bay. Goes against Jenkins. That'll be his third. Well, this is a guy they won at the free throw line. Because to think about that, you know, before I said it, because, <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, I got quiet. Well, your, your jinx right didn't time. work the last game. Like, yeah, you really, really I, tried to. I, uh, I tried hard against Fort Wayne, and, you know, they had earplugs in. They didn't hear me. 87% for Davis, and he improves upon that at the free throw line this year. He's now three away from tying his season high of 39. Did that against Hofstra in Milwaukee. How about Robert Morris? They're up 62-46 over Youngstown State with five minutes left to play in that one. I tell you, this league is a, a league of opportunity for any team that's in it. You know, uh, Robert Morris not having a great, you know, great year, but, you know, they well-coached team down there by Tool. They do a good job, and they had lost some players, you know, throughout the season, but they're playing well tonight. That foul goes against LeGreer. That'll be his first team fifth. Look at that haircut. <laughs> That's back when I had hair. I mean, I, <laughs> I love that. I wish I could get a haircut now. <laughs> Jenkins driving. And the foul again against the Titans. So fouls racking up for both of these two teams. You see a strong move right here. Nice spin. LeGreer is moving his feet. He's right there on top of it. And a little bit too much body contact that time. First shot by Jenkins in and out. Well, the Screen Bay team is a team that with no seniors on it. You know, I was watching them on senior night and not one senior, just some good young players. And I'm sure they're going to recruit well again. And this team, you know, they're known for having a solid program at Green Bay. So you're sure to look out for them next year in the Horizon League. Eight wins in the regular season last year, just five this year. But they were in a majority of their games at halftime. We talked about it, 12 leads at halftime this year. And no, there's no consolation for a halftime lead as, <laughs> as one at the end of the game. But still, it shows you they were in basketball games. They weren't all blowouts. Mm. Three to shoot. Davis trying to rain another in and out. Mm. He looks to the sky as if, wow, that was going earlier. Uh, it took a lap around the basket and went almost down and just popped right back out. Good Quick. execution that time by Green Bay. Claflin lays it off the glass and in. 73-59. They're still swarming here on defense. Davis with a good pass for McAdoo. He's had some big points off the bench. And surprisingly, attacking the basket. Shot by Ansong won't count. He is heading to the charity stripe now. And DJ Harvey, you know, does a really good job of just moving his feet. And just, a, you know, a little slow getting there this time. But, you know, it doesn't look like he's that quick, but he plays the angles on players pretty well. He's able to stay in front of people. One and one here for Ansong. Gets his second. Has struggled at the free throw line this year, 57%. Player that came over with Will Ryan after taking the head coaching job at Green Bay. Both of them were at Wheeling Jesuit, a Division II. Just one year there for Ryan before he got his first Division I head coaching opportunity. Had quite a few years in as, as an assistant in D1. Mm. Green Bay almost coming up with a steal that time. So Milwaukee and UIC tied at 21. Oakland up just five in their game against IUPUI. 
with, with five players with IUPUI. Those, you know, those guys are coming out. Nobody fouled out when they had a player injured last game against Green Bay. 35 minutes with five guys. And they also had a player blow out their shoe, literally. It was a rip in the bottom of his shoe. So a fan gave him two more pairs of sneakers, and he played with that the rest of the game. Matt Johnson puts it up and in. A nice little runner that time by Matt Johnson as he got inside of the lane. 77-61 to Trey Mercy. McGee off for Ansong, double clutch in midair and a foul. Two <laughs> birds out at Callahan Hall yeah. with the game in hand. Matt Johnson, Phil, he got all, all ball that time. We see the replay on here. It's a drive to the basket. Matt Johnson from behind playing that pretty well. I don't see the foul on that. I don't, you know, I think Matt Johnson's had a case. Slap that one down. Seventy-seven sixty-one. The score remains. Trey Mercy about to go eight and zero in conference playoff games here at Callahan Hall. There was a time where all these games were neutral site, but they moved the first round back to the post sites and the quarterfinals as well. Went back to everybody getting in the last few years. Step in front by Claflin, heave right to McAdoo though. Detroit Mercy will look to ice his clock a bit further. No hurry right now. Take their time, get a quality shot. A little bit concerns for the Titans right now with Wooly being out of the game and kind of a change in some of the things they've been doing the last four or five games. Five to shoot. Davis fades it in. He has 38 here tonight. One away from his season high. McGee double clutch pulled down by Antoine. We'll run it to the front court. Shot clock to game clock. Still has a bit of a differential. About a second and a half. I think he's just going to run this clock out right here against Green Bay and uh, tightens the chance to advance uh, to the next round of the playoffs. I guess we'll figure out sometime between now and the morning <laughs> who they'll be playing. Uh, like you said, you can't really figure the brackets out. There's always a lot of if this happened, if that happened, if this happened. So we'll wait, and I'm sure PJ does a marvelous job of keeping everybody informed. I will get an email to let me know who the next opponent will be. So one more half-court heave for McGee at